actually women have much more taste buds. We can taste beer so much better. You hear that? We can yeah. taste it so much better. I don't think I had been in here more than 30 seconds before I was welcomed and offered a beer. You guys are doing everything right in here. That's how we should do it. This is a brewery, you should have fun. And it's been such a special journey to get here. Where did it Absolutely. begin? I have such a great history. I mean, I was born and raised in Belgium. You know, my dad, he was born in Hogarth in Belgium in 1925. He was growing up next to a brewery. And it was also the only brewery in the world that was making Belgian wind beer. Wow. So, I mean, how cool is that? When do you get that chance? In the old days, there was no automation. Everything was done manually. And uh, they would always ask my dad on, on helping to brew beer. My dad was 17 years old. Learning to brew beer when you're 17 years old and then drinking it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and it's perfectly legal. And so. that's a pretty special <laughs> situation to be in. No it kidding. Is. It is. So he learned how to brew beer. Then the, the, the brewer was an older gentleman. And in 1956, he decided on retiring. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, Belgium didn't have any more wheat beer. A lot of people in Hogarden, they, they asked my dad on, come on, Pierre, you know how to make the Belgian wheat beer. Why don't you start brewing again? It's not that simple. Yeah, that's you a know? pretty tall order right there. It is. There. I mean, you need to have equipment, you need to have money and all of that. So his friends went to my dad's house and they were sitting on a table enjoying beer. And they're like, see, Pierre, this is so good beer. Why don't you stop making it? And he said, well, actually, I brewed this beer. And he's like, wait a minute, you just said it was from the neighbor. And now you said it was your beer? He's like, yes. He had to and wait they, and see if they liked it yes, first, right? Yes, he did a homebrew. <laughs> and to, just to make sure that his friends would tell the truth. So then my dad then knew how to make the wheat beer. And he converted that into a little bitty brewery. Wow. And he started, he revived the Belgian wheat beer in 1965. Oh my goodness. Which is amazing. What a special story. It is. So how do we get from there to right here in Austin, Texas? In 1989, my dad decided on retiring. He was 65 years old. You know, with, with most people when they retire, what do they say? Oh, I'm going to go vacation, lay in the sun, do some fishing, whatever. No, not my dad. What did he say? He's like, Christine, you want to go with me to Austin and build it on the brewery? So thank I said, yes. And thank goodness for I all know. of us beer-loving Austinites. How did you incorporate the old Celis Brewery into this new space? He brought his very old uh, brew house, his copper brew house with him. We were up and running in 92, the very first craft brewery in Texas. Made a partnership with Miller in 95, things didn't work out. We sold the brewery and then when they went out of business, uh, you know, everything was on the auction block. Here we are, uh, the stars aligned for me. I found the right investors. I had already my dad's recipes yeah. and this, Mashton behind us was from the original Sellers Brewery. That's I so, found it. Are you serious? I found it in a junkyard in Ohio. That is so hey, incredible. How did you track that uh, down? I'm a good track dog. <laughs> <laughs> so it was not in that shape. It was black. It was outside for, for about 16 years. So the copper was not even noticeable. It was just blackened. How did you get this so beautiful? With a group of great people from Austin, volunteered to help me clean this copper kettle for three weeks straight. They volunteered they in exchange volunteered. for a lot of beer, I'm Beer and pizza and all of that. <laughs> yes, that's how you do it. And then it gets to be the centerpiece of this gorgeous space when it you is. walk in. Absolutely. And then I also, I was able to buy my name back. Yes. Which is That huge. is a big deal. So now, I mean, it was like full circle. When you come in here, I wanted to have that wow factor. Yeah. I wanted to be like, oh, this is a, a brewery with a lot of history. It's a special place. You can feel that in it every is. inch of it. And, and so for me, I wanted to continue the legacy. I wanted to bring back the very first craft brewery to, to Austin. Mm -hmm. Austin deserves that. And then my daughter wanted to be a brewer. You know, this is the perfect recipe for continuing or starting a new brewery. I love that. And, by, and besides that, I like to drink once in a while and a good beer. I mean, <laughs> occasionally, occasionally, if you have to. <laughs> I, I could know. sit here all day and just listen to you tell this amazing history, Thank but you. I'd also, you know, love to taste the history. Absolutely. So this is the flagship. This is the Salos Wine. That's what we're known for. Is this the beer that started this it all? This is the beer that started it all. So it has the, the uh, papyri yeast strain. It has the unmalted wheat oats. So it's really that nice, creamy taste. 
and it has orange peel and coriander. There's a balance to it. There's an art in brewing that. This is beer poetry right here. Mm -hmm. This it is so good. It takes a long time to really master that too. Wow. And we invested very heavily in really good equipment. So yeah. it's not just putting blends or raw materials together. It's the art of brewing. Yeah. You need to have passion. You, that comes from here. I love that. You can and a taste little bit from there. And a little bit here. There. You can taste that. The number one priority for this brewery is consistency mm -hmm. and it's quality. We won't put anything out of, nothing leaves if it doesn't uh, has a certain criteria. It yeah. has to be perfect. Yeah. And I mean, my dad was a great mentor. So his recipes that you were talking about mm -hmm. that you've carried along, mm -hmm. I mean, do you keep those in captivity somewhere all locked Pretty up? Much. And say, yes. <laughs> Pretty, Pretty much. much. Like, Actually, yes, we do. Give us some perspective of the amount of beer that you're able to make. Momentarily, we are actually making four uh, Cellus beers. Wow. And then we have 12 uh, unit tanks. You know, that's where you do all the fermentation, the aging of the beer. We have the processing area with the centrifuge, inline carbonator. We have a full-on packaging line with canning, bottling, and kegging. It's really, really nice. And yes. it's a family affair still. Your daughter and you work together. What mm -hmm. does that look like? It's, it's absolutely fun. First it was dad and and daughter, now it's it's mother and daughter. I'm actually now in the role of my dad's footsteps. I can give all the information that I learned from him and, and contribute that to my daughter or help my daughter. What does that mean to you to be this mother-daughter duo in a really heavily male-dominated industry? It is absolutely great. And you know, we actually, women have much more taste buds. We can taste beer so much better. You hear that? We can yeah. taste it so much better. Yeah. <laughs> She always wanted to follow in her grandfather's footsteps. And giving the ability to, to fulfill that dream for her, is, it's, it's amazing. I never, you know, pushed my, my daughter to be a brewer. My dad did never do that to me. You, you know, you want to be happy what you do. Especially when you make a beer, it has to come from within. Mm -hmm. We talk about it all the time. We, we taste beers, we, we come up with new recipes, and, and we have a great team. This is now the third time that I'm involved with the brewery, you know, from when I grew up, and it was my place cake, mm -hmm. and then the first craft brewery in Texas, and now this brewery, it's a whole different world right now because it's so much more competitive. Yeah. When we came over here, we all, we had to educate people. They didn't know the difference between a beer and an ale. Why is it hazy? What about fruit beer? And this fruit beer, I mean, this is, this is also a pride and joy of us. It took my dad a year to, to finalize that recipe. And uh, so for me, he did the hard work. I'm just taking his uh, labor of, of fruits of, of labor. Is that how you say it in yes, English? Yes, of, of his love. labor, yes. <laughs> so the labor of love, and now I get to implement that in this great brewery. That is then the, the South Raspberry. Um, you know, the basis is almost the white, and then we, we uh, use them the pure raspberry juice. We don't do any shortcuts. It's a nice blend of, of sweetness a little bit with, with quite a bit of tartness, actually. This is actually a perfect beer. I'm so thrilled to be drinking this right now. What are you most proud of right now when you look back on the last few years? Actually, you know, uh, to be able to start this again, to continue this legacy and to find the right team to fulfill all our dreams. This is after a lot of hard work and a lot of uh, sleepless nights. Uh, I'm so happy to be back in business and to be and to be brewing again here in Austin. It took me uh, 17 years to buy my name back wow. and it's now here to stay. This will continue.